When we reach that city of the new Jerusalem, where we're going to sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by. Oh, how the ransom singers will together lift their hands, where we're going to sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by. Well, it is 10.30, or it's actually 10.32. You will get started, because again, I'm committed to keeping, you know, to our time and keeping our lessons here. So good to see everybody oh, again. Good morning, good morning. You know, looks like, uh, you know, I see the Huffs there, the West family, the Johnsons. All right, there we go. We've got a few folks here. So, you know, so it's again, it's in the Brother Williams and Sister Williams. So again, so good to see everybody this morning. We will still, so again, as we started, we started the lesson, lesson four, still in the Gospel of John. Um, and we're still, as we begin to, your host has spotlighted so for everyone. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume that's Trevin um, <laughs> that's doing the spotlighting. <laughs> okay, um, appreciate that. Uh, but again, lesson four started, and we started last week, and this again is about the cleansing of the temple. You know, and you know, last week as we began, we started with the first part of the lesson where we saw um, the beginning with um, beginning with you know with you know as we started with verse 12, 13, You know, um, as we saw this, you know, with, with with Jesus and and saw his reaction as he came into the into the temple. And how he reacted and asked, basically saw individuals exchanging money and you know selling things and doing all kinds of different things, right? And basically, as he told them, you know, he's like, "Hey, you know, you need to get out of here. You need to move on. You know, this is this is not. You know, how can you? How dare you? You know, treat my father's house this way?" And you know, and again, last week as we talked about. You know, we talked about his reaction, okay? He talked about the reaction. Uh, we talked about last week, the, 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 everyone's reaction, his reaction to that uh, in that regard. Uh-oh, missed something, okay. Uh, we talked about his attitude and his reaction, right? Uh, and all, and we talked about his emotion and we talked about anger and when is it appropriate and all to be angry, okay? And so um, this week, you know, I want to pick up where, uh, where, you know, where I thought it was interesting. I want to pick up where the Jewish leaders responded, okay? Because obviously we see this anger, okay? He responds, he has his anger, okay? And, and all, and, and, and he goes through this. And, in, you know, it's fascinating. And if we go to, let's look at... Uh, we said, so verse 17 says, his disciples remember that it is written, zeal for your house will consume me. And then the Jews demanded of him, what miraculous sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all of this? Okay. Here it is. Jesus has come in. They are, we're doing what they're doing. You know, he sees all of this inequity going on. He sees them sharing, you know, well, not sharing, selling things, things that, treating this temple of God the way it is. And he reacts, he, you know, tells him, get out, turns things over, you know, he's anger, he's, you know, and all. And this is, and their response is, what miraculous sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all of this? Isn't it interesting, right? That, 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 that was their reaction. Why, you know, I, I do find that fascinating, you know? Why do you think that? Because you know, instead of them saying, asking, hey, why did you send the money changes away? Why did you do all of this? They responded with what miraculous sign can you show us to prove your authority? Okay. I want to open it up for comments there because I find that interesting. What, what, why is it, why do you think they responded that way? And what, you know, when you think of that response, you know, of all the responses they could have given, um, wow, that was.
It ain't the video start video. You ain't gonna be on that unless it start video. That was a question. Will you, will you, will you fight, raise that question again? I don't know that I, I totally follow. Okay, my question is why? Why? How did when you look about that? Why do you think? You know, how did the Jewish leaders respond when you think of that, and to his actions, and why did they respond that way? Because he came, well, again, think about this. He, as he came in, he was angry. He, you know, we, we know what he did, all right? We see the comment there in verse 18, okay? Beginning with verse 18, and it can go all the way down, but maybe even, the, you know, further down. Again, if you see this, the first, their, first ant, their first question is, what miraculous sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all of this? Because they thought they had just as much right as he had to be there. And probably they probably felt like they most more so because he was out trying to prove himself this great teacher. But they were the Jews. This was their place. We do what we want to in our own place. Mm. OK. OK. Yeah. OK. You know. Anyone else? And they probably thought he was mad because he didn't have a booth. <laughs> well, I guess, I guess they felt like they were in control and 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 he should have gone through them to make any changes to something kind of like they have the authority they're the decision make, make the decisions or whatever and he should be beneath them he shouldn't be you know going above their authority or whatever okay 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 let me ask you this. Think of the statement. What miraculous sign can you show us? What had been Jesus, you know, if you think about what Jesus had been doing as he's been going through and he's been teaching and doing the, the different things, right? He's been, you know, been, been, been showing them through some of these different miracles and all, right? And we've, you know, we've talked about it all through the gospels. I find it interesting that their first question is, Show us a miracle, right? You know, I think it's, you know, as you talk about, hey, you know, like to, to, your, to all your points, hey, you didn't come to us, you didn't check, you know, we, you know, we're, we're, the, we're the Jewish leaders here, we control this place. So how about you show us a miracle that proves you have the authority to come in here and do all of this? Yes, Sister Williams. And uh, verse 16, when he mm -hmm. said, take not my father's house, uh, uh, house, house, house of merchandise. And I think they were right there challenging him. He said, you know, you're the son of God. Show us that this is your father's house. Yeah. Let, let me see it. Show yeah. me. Yeah. 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 Show us. Prove to us. You've been showing all these other miracles. You've been doing all these other things. How about you show us one of those to prove that you can do this? that this is what you're supposed to be doing, okay? How about you do that, all right? So I find that fascinating. But what, what's even more fascinating is what did Jesus say? What was Jesus's response? Re re somebody read verse 19. What was Jesus's response? Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Hmm. Hmm. So he, so again, they challenged him with a miracle, and he tells them destroy it. Right now, here we are as we see this. Okay, so there's this battle that's going on. Okay, and again, this is this is another thing that we know. You know, and of course we know this because this isn't those of us that have studied this scripture. We know this, but it's again. Isn't it fascinating, right? As we think through this, right? All right, you know, isn't it fascinating that you look at verse 20, they turn around and say, it has taken 46 years to build this temple and you're gonna raise it in three days. 46 years. But obviously they they weren't, you know, they didn't they weren't picking up what Jesus was putting down, were they? 
<laughs> no, worth it. Because he wasn't talking about the physical temple. Which temple was he talking about? So his, his body. His body, himself. Okay. He was he was telling them, you want to know about a miracle? You know, you're gonna challenge me. You want to know what miracle to prove that this is it? All right, tear it down. Tear this temple down and I'll raise it in three days. Okay. And again, they didn't, they, 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 they could not understand, right? They couldn't understand all of this. You know, they were still, they were still couldn't follow, you know. Brother Young. Yes, Sister Mary. They probably said, boy, bye. Yep. Get out of here. Yeah, get out of here. Go <laughs> on somewhere, right? But yeah, you know what's really interesting is, is again, if we remember when we first began this the, this, this gospel of John, right? The first very verse one, okay, it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was God. He was he was with God in the beginning, and through all him, through him all things were made. Okay. This goes back to sort of setting it up, reminding, reminding all of us, but should have reminded them that I've been here, okay. This temple that I'm talking about, I'm not talking about this physical temple. I'm not talking about this. If you want to know what authority I have, if you want to understand and you really want to know about a miracle, here, tear it down. Okay? And then this is what this is. Now, what's, what's interesting is, at that particular time, no one, you know, I still don't think they still got it. Okay? And obviously, we don't know, but went on but it, of course on because it doesn't say but then after the, the scriptures it says it says after he was raised from the dead his disciples recalled what he said so it wasn't until after right jesus was crucified dead buried risen and risen that after his disciples remembered and then they were like uh oh now i know what he was saying now i know what he's talking about right now it's like, hmm, huh. you know, let me ask you this. You ever been in a situation where someone said something to you? You didn't get it then, you know? You know, I remember, I, I remember growing up, especially with my grandmother, she would say something at the time. I'm like, I thought I knew what she was talking about, but I didn't understand it then. And then it's, it made, it's years later or time later that it, it comes back to me that I'm like, oh. That's what that meant. <laughs> you know, you ever had that? Anybody ever, you know, Sister Ron, I see you shaking your head, you know. I see Sister Huff raising her head, right? You know, we've all had that. You, you, we, you know, it's, and it's fascinating because as a parent now, you know, there are things that I say to my kids that I know they're looking at me like, right, <laughs> you know. They're looking at me like, yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah, we hear you, whatever, you know. But then it isn't until something happens, then they come back and go, now I understand. Okay? And so here it is, we, this is, you know, not to compare the two, but to just bring it to more practical application. But here it is, it wasn't until after Jesus had died and had come back that we then understand that the disciples even understood what it was. They didn't know what it was. They had no idea. Okay? You know? So I'll pause here for any comments, feedback, or anything else on this before we go to another question. Yes, Sister, Sister Williams. Yep. I'm not, I'm, I'm doing you my have to unmute. Yeah, I'm even so. Well, um, you know, um, the the saying, I, I wish I knew then what I know now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I would have done things differently. Yep. And I think that um, these people probably would have, had they really known. I think it's, is it in Hebrew said, had they known he was the son of God, they wouldn't have crucified him, had <laughs> they known. And I, I think know. that uh, mm -hmm. we as people, and, you know, at my young age, when I look back, I think, you know, had I known then what I know now, I would have done differently. And so, you know, I keep thinking that 
we need to start listening to people who have had experience and, and quit thinking all oh, that was when thinking, well, you know, they know now, so let me try to uh, conduct myself differently because, mm -hmm. you know, I think they were pricked in their hearts because they thought, man, had we known, we wouldn't have done this. And so, mm -hmm. you know, on the day of Pentecost, when they were, they were pricked in their hearts because now they understood it, then they didn't understand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I ain't gonna raise my hand no more. No, you're fine, you're fine, you're totally fine. Yeah, Rhonda. Question, so yeah. had they known, then they would not have crucified them and we wouldn't have salvation, right? Right. Mm -hmm. The thing with the things that we've gone through in our lives, mm -hmm. if we had not experienced those things, would we really be the people that we are today? Mm -hmm. So I think the lesson is, at least for me anyway because sometimes I look back and I and I think I would have done xyz differently you know if I had known some things or if I would have listened to some things but then I go back and think well would I be the person I am today if mm -hmm. I hadn't experienced those things mm -hmm. yeah but you wouldn't have any regrets you know what the old people say bought sense <laughs> is better <laughs> yeah. you know it's it's you know when I when I listen to this and as I think of this, you know you ever watch there and there's there've been different movies and I can't think of any title right now but different movies where they you know like like when they something happens, you know and someone says well I, if I get this chance I'm going to do this and you know all throughout the time they're telling them there's someone there telling them all right if you don't do don't do that but if you do do that understand it will it's going to change something. And each time they do it, it changes the course of history. It changes something else. Or in some instances, right, where they may not have, something may have happened or whatever, they may have said, you know what, I changed it because, you know, I did this because that way this terrible thing would not have happened, okay? But because they changed it, not only did the terrible thing not have happened, maybe that person wasn't even there or that person didn't know them or whatever. So there's truth to all of this, you know? And I, it's always interesting when, when folks talk about this. And I always wonder that, yeah, you know, it's, hindsight is always 2020. Hindsight is, you know, <laughs> when you can look back, it's good. Yeah, Sister Huff. I was just gonna say too, sometimes when we have to go through those things, when we don't heed warnings or advice, we still have to understand there are consequences and we have to endure sometimes some of those consequences. It doesn't mean just because we come to a realization of what we should have done that we don't have to go through those consequences. We do, but our faith should still stay strong through that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's a great segue to my next question because the next question says, we look at verses 23 and 24. You know, it says, now while he was in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, many people saw the miraculous signs he was doing and believed in his name, but Jesus would not entrust himself to them for he knew all men. Okay. Why was this? Why didn't he entrust himself to them and what may have been a problem with their faith? Go ahead, Brother Williams. Question is, did they really trust him? Mm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, did they really trust him? Even the disciples, you know, they were amazed, you know, after he was resurrected, you know. And, and I just wondered, do, do we have the same kind of trust or are we gonna be amazed when the Lord returned, do we really believe that? Mm. Hmm. Do we? It's a great question. And I think too that they, you know, he probably said, you know, they believe, but you know, they kind of shaky. You know, if something go down, you know, they might, nah. You know, their their faith, like he said, their trust. But they believed him, but they weren't sure. Mm. And sometimes that's, you know, when people say you have to step out on faith, and we say, oh. No. Know about that, you know, mm -hmm. we're kind of, kind of scared. Mm -hmm. It's different, right? Very mm -hmm. different, very different. And, and Peter tried to step out on faith and saint. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> <So>. <laughs> he tried. Gio? Hey, Brother Gio, how you doing? 
Good, good. How y'all doing? Now, I, I, thank you. Thank you for bringing that up because I think that's an important one. And piggybacking off of what Brother Williams was saying, that's a question I feel like we have to evaluate ourselves. Like, do we actually believe that salvation is real? Because, I mean, the disciples ran with Jesus all the time and he came back and they were, holy, oh, Jesus back. Like, it shouldn't be a surprise to them, but it, it was. And that's a problem when you really think about it because with this faith that they said they had, and I mean, of course, like Peter as an example, denied Christ three times mm -hmm. before the, the rooster crowed. And I mean, it was, mm -hmm. it's just something I feel like we should evaluate ourselves by to be sure that our faith is real because we want to be sure that if we say we believe we actually are. Yeah. You know, Brother Young, um, the coronavirus, mm -hmm. you know, some people think it's real and some think it's not. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, some people, um, yesterday I went to uh, <laughs> to the store and the big sign says, to enter, you have to have on your mask. How many people, you know, I'm about to pass out because I couldn't breathe. And then I saw people just walking on in the store like there was no sign. Mm -hmm. And so I think until it happens to you, then you don't believe it. It's kind of like everybody else dies, but I didn't. So, mm -hmm. you know, death don't bother me until mm -hmm. it's something personal. Mm -hmm. And so until we have a, a personal, uh, relate, I don't want to say relationship, but mm -hmm. a personal event with God, mm -hmm. it's kind of hard, you know, sometimes for people to believe because they haven't experienced it person uh, firsthand you can i can tell you all along all i want what god did for me and all this but until you until know it, it yeah yeah until, yeah until i go through it or you or that person until you experience it you may not believe it you know or you are or you will discount it saying yeah that happened to you because you know that's you out there not doing whatever i'm good you know yeah brother William. uh when it comes to trusting the lord Okay, remember, we live by faith and not by sight. Mm -hmm. and, and he's our, our path, you know, that we're following him. Well, I, I'm thinking, you know, that even the disciples didn't believe that he was going to be resurrected in three days. And he told them that, mm -hmm. you know, they were saying, oh, no, you know, but they saw the miracles he did, but they still didn't believe in that. So, so if, if we're going to trust God, we got to believe at that moment, whatever it's going to be in the future. Mm -hmm. Not wait for the for it to you know to develop and then say, "Oh yeah, then it's happening." Hmm. Yeah, it happened. Yeah, because it just happened. You know. You know, I was thinking of go ahead. You done? What well, I'm going to say, Winston? That you know, we trust in a lots of things we don't see. Mm hmm. Oh, lots of things we don't see, but then when it comes to our faith and our, and our relationship with the Lord, how about that trusting? You know, mm -hmm. that there's going to be a judgment day. But mm -hmm. how many people really believe that? Mm -hmm. I was going to say, you know, and then he said Jesus was uh, mindset, and but Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men. And, and I was remember thinking about. When Thomas said, so if I can put my, you know, my hand in the side and feel, you know, I won't believe in. And then Jesus' response was to Thomas was that, you know, feel it and see. And then he said, but you, because you you felt it, you believe is a blessed those who don't see and believe. And so, you know, because Jesus knew the hearts of men that they were fickle. You know, he said, nah, I ain't going to commit myself to them. Mm. And I think that's the same way it is with us. When we're fickle in our faith, God don't all necessarily commit himself to us either. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's something because when we think of this, and as I think about this lesson, right, especially towards the end, right, <laughs> as, 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 as we go in through this, you know, it starts with him and he walks into this temple and he sees all of these things happening, right? And really, if you think about it, these things are distractions. They're distractions from what the purpose of why everyone was coming to the temple, what they were supposed to be coming to do, right? And then as you go through it, the thing is, is, is 
is was again, he's in Jerusalem. And again, people saw the miracle signs that he was doing. And because they saw the signs, that's why they believed him. Okay. But again, he didn't entrust them. But you know what? He didn't have to, did he? He didn't have to. Because we see in verse 25, he says he didn't need man's testimony. He don't need man's testimony about man. For he knew what was in man. Okay. In other words, hey, I don't need you to tell me about you. <laughs> you know, I know. Okay. And I think that's different. And that's, in, that's an important piece. And Brother Williams, when you talk about, you know, we, we're supposed to, you know, we live by faith, not by sight. But the, the thing is, is, you know, do we? That's what we're supposed to do. But, you know, as we see here in the scripture, they, it's, it's, they saw the miracle signs. Okay. They saw. Okay. And because they saw it, that's how they made that determination, you know, and, and because of that. And so as I wrap up here, my question is, I want us to think about, okay? I want us to think about what are the activities and the things that go on that might be a distraction? What are the things that go on, whether we're in worship service or wherever we're, wherever, when we should, when, whatever it is that we should be doing and spending our time, what are those distractions? What are the things that, that could be, that could, that could be taking away from that, okay? And what could we actually do? What should we, what, what are the things that we could do to make, to, to, to make those things more reverent or more um, respectful and all? Brother Anthony, good, good to, uh, Anthony, good to see you. Close encounters, all right. Hey, Brother Young. Hey, what's up, brother? Go ahead. Oh, I would chime in and I would say this sometimes, right? During worship service, we use it. As, it can be a great tool in terms of our Bible app, but, you know, if we don't watch it, sometimes when you have it, you have these alerts pop up or somebody might be texting you or something. So you really have to be on guard. You know, I've been thinking about this since we've been out and looking at this lesson, just thinking, you know, sometimes that's why I love, love my, you know, my Bible that I can hold in my hand because of that, you don't get distracted. And usually in service, uh-oh, I think, we, I think he got locked up on us. His words were so profound that, you know, Oh, Brother Herschel, you back? Oh. You oh, back? I'm done. Could you hear me? Oh, well, no. You, 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 you got, you, you froze up and you lost your, you uh, lost your, we lost you. Like I said, your words are so profound. And man, you know, it just froze. Okay. Can you hear me now? We can. Okay. I'll summarize really quick. I was saying this. Mm -hmm. You know, we use it for our Bible lab mm -hmm. uh, during service. And if we're not careful, those messages and all those alerts and things that we get can come on during service and be a distraction to us. You know, I try to always carry this plus my regular Bible. Uh, my paper Bible, mm -hmm. and I think that's good because I can't remember some event happened recently in the news while we were still meeting and popped in, and all these alerts kept coming in. And I just thought, man, I got to put this thing down. You mm -hmm. know, uh, was the weather alert, all those things that we talk about this lesson. And I thought about this last week. We have to be careful about that because it can be a distraction and take our mindset. We're only at worship service for, you know, an hour, 15 minutes, hour and a half. And if outside world, and I understand emergencies might pop up, right? Something come up mm -hmm. and you may have to leave. But things that can wait, making sure that they take their proper place. Yeah. Yeah, I think that, I mean, it, it's funny you say that because even this morning as I'm sitting here, we're on this Zoom call with this technology <laughs> and it's fascinating and I'm sure y'all have seen me. Hey, can you hear us? We can, we can definitely hear you. 
We can't, you're frozen, but we can hear you. Yes. Were you still saying something else? Sister Rhonda said she had a similar comment. That, go ahead, Sister Rhonda, you were going to say something? Up, oh, the West family says we're good. Okay. But Sister Rhonda says the same thing about distractions and if we're not disciplined. I think the other thing is it's important, you know, as we've all been here this morning, um, you know, as I was going to say, even with, with Zoom, one of the things I found fascinating, Zoom, the technology is great, but it can be a distraction in itself. You know, even as I'm sitting here, I mean, I've gotten, I don't know how many alerts that have popped up, you know, between my computer and my iPad, just sitting here, right? Just, just different alerts, you know, some of the alerts was, you know, was Zoom alert saying, you know, hey, Zoom is extended to minutes and, you know, all the different things. And it's like all these different things coming on, right? So I think it's important for us. And if I, if I, if, as I, as I wrap up this lesson, I think it's important. Oh, go ahead. You got something to say, Sister Amanda? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Um, I was thinking about uh, NBA players and the mm -hmm. distractions. If you, if I can shoot a basket if nobody's yelling at me, mm. but I couldn't play in an in a NBA game with other professionals, the audience yelling at me, the coach saying something, and then you, you're watching the game and you see the momentum shift. Oh, they're losing. Mm. Then after the second half, Oh, they really lost. They didn't pick themselves back up. So when I look at that, I think of, can I perform as a Christian under pressure? Mm. Can I be tempered still to where I'm not going to break under a lot of different things? Uh, if, if I have a surgeon and, mm. I, and the surgeon is performing surgery, I don't want them to get distracted. But if they do, <laughs> I don't want them to nick anything and hit the wrong thing. So that's what I was like. Satan is that, hey, look at me, look at me, hey, you mm -hmm. know, he's the distractor trying to get you off your game, and the Holy Spirit inside of you was like, tap into me, I got it, you know, but then, no, 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 I got this, let me try to figure this situation out myself, because you're paying attention to the distraction, so I want to be the NBA player or the surgeon that flawlessly can do it without, yeah, so that's, we yeah. each have to look at what is our distractions. Yep. But yeah, that's how I was. And I, I, no, that's good. Um, we say, Gio. In addition to the, oh, can y'all hear me all right? Yeah, we can. Um, in addition to the phones, I feel like something that could really bother us if we're in worship or even just pushing the word out to the world um, and, you know, just sharing the word as we should. I think something that can distract us a lot is just the normal worries of every day to day thing, whether that be the responsibilities of family or work, they can really get in your mind a lot of times and prevent you from being able to absorb the word and share the word. Like if you go into something like what we're doing right now, or if we're going into a worship service of the church, or if you're going into supposedly speaking with a friend or somebody you know about the word, if your mind is clouded with worry or stress from the world, it makes it difficult for that word to bind to your heart and mm. affect you. Hmm. Amen. Well, I don't know if that's the best, better way to better, better way to end it all. Go ahead, brother. What were you uh, gonna say? Well, quick, I actually a request. We talking What's about that? distractions, and and I want to hear uh, brother Anthony make a quick comment. I know he and I talk a lot when I'm traveling, and and he's kind of my go-to if I'm driving on the road, and we talk about different things that happen. I'm wondering from him if he got any comment on distraction when he's pulling that big 18 wheeler, you know. So brother Anthony, you got anything to add? No, uh, pretty much, you know, just piggybacking on what everyone said, you know, just uh <clears throat> Satan just knows, you know, that how to take your distraction away from what you what you focus on to not being focused on such as, you know, someone just jumping in front of you, cutting mm -hmm. you off and you have mm -hmm. to, you know, stop quickly and, and, and you lose focus on what you're really doing. You know, you miss your turn or something, you know, the exit because mm -hmm. this person then jumped in front of you and cut you off and just lose distraction. Mm -hmm. 
you know, it's interesting because I sit here, you know, I, I wonder how many of us really, how many of us are, are easily distracted or, or, you know, you know, they talk about this whole attention deficit, right? You know, we all have some level of attention deficit, you know, let's be, if we're being honest with ourselves, there's something that whether it's worry, whether it's stress, whether it's whatever it is, there's something that, that will distract us, that can get our attention away from whatever it is that we should be focused on. And I think it's important that as we think of this, that we remind ourselves, um, you know, what is it? Where should we be? You know, you know, it's 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 one of those things we have to think about. You know, I've been watching, you know, the 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 this this documentary on the on the Chicago Bulls. It talks about the last dance. And everyone has been it's fascinating because what everyone, a lot of the analysts and everyone's been talking about is they keep talking about Michael Jordan's focus and how he can just be in that moment you know, and just how singularly focused he, he has been in his career about different things and all. And, you know, it's funny because it's, it's a little system man to talk about basketball players and sports or whatever else. And, you know, there's, it's just one of those things. That's, that's one of those things that, that sort of happens. But I, my question, my, my, the, my question, but I think the thing I want us to think about is how can we be that singularly focused when it comes to our worship? How can we be that singularly focused when it comes to our prayer? when it comes to our study, okay? How do we do that, all right? And so with that, I know we're a little bit over time, but man, again, it is so great to have had this opportunity for us to come together. I really, you know, really appreciate it and, and all. Next week, we will start with lesson five, which will start with John chapter three, lesson of the verses one through 21 and all. But with that, Brother Williams, if you, if you don't mind, if you would dismiss us in a word of prayer, and if no one else has anything, we'll let Brother Williams dismiss us. Hey, anybody have anything? Yes, mm -hmm. I do. I do. Um, just that we stay dedicated in faith and that we don't get distracted by the world and everything else that's going on. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's not forget Wednesday night, seven o'clock. Okay. Uh, you know, God's been good to us all this week, you know. Even with everything going around and always hurting to see more people dying, but still God is so good to us. So I think we you talk about focus. We need to always focus on the good things in life. Hmm. Let us pray. Oh well, Heavenly Father, again we we come to you thanking you for this day. Another day you have given to us a a day that we can get up and realize how blessed we are today because you always have blessing us. We pray for those who are not as fortunate as we are and pray for those families that have lost loved ones. Pray for those who are sick and that should be with them. But God, I always want <clears throat> us to be reminded how blessed you have blessed us. And we're so blessed. We're so blessed to have this Bible class today. We're so blessed, blessed that we can come together and study your word, even in, in this technology way. We thank you for that. We thank you for all the blessings you bless us with. And when I look back, and, and God, you've been so good to me. You've been so good to all of us. And I thank you so much for that. I want us to uh, always remind ourselves just how much you love us, because you love us so much. Even though we are absent from each other, we still have that brotherly love if we still continue and grow. So thank you for loving us. And because you love us, it teaches us to love each other and to love one another. And we thank you for that. And God, I always pray at the end of this day, every day, that we'll be more closer to you. We'll be drawn more closer to you if it's by your word and by your spirit, but we'll be closer to you. And I pray that prayer again for today. Thank you for this class. Thank you, Brother Young. Thank you for all the participants. We ask this prayer in your name, your son's name, who give his whole life for us. 
and we thank him today. And God, as always, we want you to know we love you. We love your son and we love your words. Yes, this prayer in his name. Amen. Amen. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides.